Hello and welcome to the Educators Podcast. I am Vishal Begaita, the founder of Educator and your host for this podcast. The Educators Podcast is an opportunity for you to learn more about what goes into creating the learning resources on educator.com. In our seventh episode, we are joined by Charles Booth. Charles has experience in the world of publishing, digital marketing and adult education. Let's learn more about his story. Hello, Charles. Thank you very、Hello. much for joining me today on the Educators Podcast. How yeah, are you doing? Ah,、oh, super. I'm so pumped up. I'm so raring to go. This is going to be the the best day this week. I can feel it coming. Excellent. Could you、um, introduce yourself、uh, and give a bit more insight into your background, please? Yeah, sure thing. So, yeah,、um, I mean, my name's Charles. I'm a, a virtual trainer or virtual training enthusiast.、Uh, I'm quite fortunate.、Actually、deliver training, training,、um, I deliver virtual training, online training, full time, and I have done.、Uh, I've done it full time for the last well over a year, and I've done it, you know, kind of as part of my job for the last five years as a virtual trainer on webinars and such like.、Um, They, yeah, my actual background.、Uh, I, I come from the apprenticeship industry.、Uh, I guess that's probably the safest way of putting it. So I've、uh, I've, I've always worked in kind of like a you know like design, web design,、uh, printing, and digital marketing in that kind of industry.、Um, but coming from the industry, I, I now work with apprentices, and uh, uh, we. Yeah, we deliver courses for apprenticeships, and we and we do kind of online course for apprenticeships. In particular, this role I'm on right now, we've got this luxury virtual training course where they get like a a full suite of of, of e-learning and virtual training and all that kind of exciting stuff. And so, yeah, my background, the bit I love the most, is actually delivering the live training, building the kind of the resource to actually. Yeah, make a, a course that anyone can do anywhere in the world. You know,、um, like people in the the middle of the the moors who can't get to a city for an actual classroom or anything like that. So, yeah, that's kind of a, that's been my bag.、Uh, that's the that's the stuff I do now, and、uh, particularly with the apprenticeship side, that's the side I probably get on with the most because、uh, historically I was an apprentice myself, so I've been on the receiving end of that、uh, that training experience, and.、Um, I've got some good memories and some bad memories, and so part of it's all about、uh, trying to combine the two, deal with the bad memories, and make it、uh, an awesome experience for everyone.、Um, at the same time, all the stuff that I love the most, like the actual working together. How do you build that and、uh, build that into a, vir- a virtual environment as well, and making that sort of thing work? Excellent. Okay, and you, you hinted at some of the earlier parts of your career.、Um, And I obviously know a little bit more from our previous conversations, but、um, there was a part of your career where you you were involved in book publishing. Yeah,、um, you mentioned,、uh, and then you did mention、uh, just a few seconds ago the digital marketing. Can you tell me a bit more about how you transitioned between these sort of different media? Yeah, well, it's a so how I originally got set up、um, when I was a say when I was a, a wee youth.、Um, actually,、uh, I had a youth worker who was trying to get me into work and stuff like that, and、uh, he literally took me two job interviews that he had found and said, "Right, go here and do this." And I went to this one company, and it's a printing and design company, and they said, "Right, let's、uh, do this." You know, yeah, we'll have him get him on for a week for free, doing work experience, and then he put us on this apprenticeship stuff. And、uh, I'd never even heard of printing before, never even knew it existed or anything about the industry or anything. And、um, I got into it. I started doing printing. Mostly it was junk mail, but then it was like brochures and stuff. And、uh, I was working for this other company where we were printing brochures and books and a lot of children's books and stuff like that. And and I thought, yeah, do you know what this is? But publishing stuff's all right, isn't it? This isn't so bad.、Um, so yeah, part way through, whilst I was working for somebody else, I bought this machine from China that made paperback books,、um, and it was superb. So I was like, right, I bought this machine. It cost me thousands and thousands, but I was like, right, I'm going to set up my own and、I、set up this business.、And、I said, right, I'm going to be a book publisher, guys.、Uh, I started doing my own printing, my own kind of advertising stuff as well. But I was,、uh, yeah, the main thing that made me the money was actually publishing and creating the books. And so、um, a lot of it was like self-publishing. In fact, in reality, most of it was catalogs. Most of it was like I remember doing catalogs like shoes and clothes, and I did this really strange one for mannequins, which was、uh, surreal.、Um, but yeah, so I went from I originally started with this whole book publishing thing,、uh, not realizing how much work it was.、Um, but a lot of the actual customers I was talking to, they all, you know, they'd all talk about.、Um, I'm saying they all. I had quite a few customers who'd talk about they want some young whippersnapper to come in and sort out the website. This is when websites were still kind of like a dark art, I'm guessing. 
probably not. Maybe it was when digital marketing was just starting. Um, but they talk about wanting a website, wanting to you know have the, have the have themselves on Google Maps and and be found and stuff like that. So um, I actually booked in a session with one of my friends who's a proper IT guy, and uh, he spent two hours teaching me a bit about websites. Uh, and in two, a two hours, a two hour session, not a week session, not a two week session, not a month, session, a two hour session with one bloke. I'd learned how to do website design. Um, I've gone from nothing to doing websites in two hours, granted as an amateur, but enough to actually go back to my customer and say, well, look, I'm an amateur, but I can do this. And I showed them what I could do. And they went, that's what, that's all we need. That's what we need. We need to be on Google Maps. We need a contact page. We need a form. And then, so yeah, from that two hour session, I've probably, I've earned thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds after that. I think from one two hour session, it's a, amazing. Um, but then I realized how hard publishing and printing and advertising was, and particularly with printing advertising, like leaflet stuff, the return of investment was nothing, but compared to this web design stuff and this digital marketing stuff, which was taking off and was essentially, I just had to put some hours in and I could do it after, you know, like you know, I could do it after six o'clock. I could do it, you know, in the evening if I needed to, uh, I could do it like more flexibly. And um, so this, that I particularly starting web design before I moved into the full suite of digital marketing, I was like, do you know what? I need to, um, I need to get out of the printing game. I need to jump into this digital marketing thing. And yeah, like, sure enough, over time, I sold off the machine. I sold off all of the, uh, I had a few machines actually. I sold off the whole business and uh, set up as, right, I'm going to do something different now. And I kind of went into that whole IT side of it, went into digital marketing. And then because I went to, I was actually getting into training around the same sort of time. I wanted to do the training thing. I got um, quite lucky in that uh, I landed a couple of training roles, which actually allowed me to grow that whole, the virtual training, the digital marketing, the design, the, the web design, uh, a whole lot more. Um, yeah, so I started making the switch, um, which I do not regret at all. Printing was great, but digital marketing, it is the future, isn't it? And it is the sort of thing that everybody needs it and that each person has their own problem. And uh, yeah, it's not like a standard, right, call an agency and let them run the social media. Like it's it's the specific stuff, isn't it? The technical stuff. Um, I'm rambling. <laughs> no, 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 that's okay. I mean, where where you got to at the end was um, you, you talked about getting into the teaching side. So I want to just dive into that a bit further and understand a bit more about that transition into adult education. So sure. h- how did that opportunity come about uh, and how has that experience been? Well, that was, um, it, it, it came out, it's an absolute like strike. I got really lucky one day. Um, like, uh, so the, the, the college I went to when I was an apprentice, uh, originally, um, once I'd set up my own business, I said, right, I'm, I'm doing my own thing. I actually uh, called my old, uh, my old teacher because I still, you know, I mean, I don't really see him so much right now, but I still, you know, would keep in touch with him um, like after I'd finished my own college with my own apprenticeship and stuff like that I told him I wrapped set up on my own I've gone and done this I've gone and done that and then we end I don't know how we ended up talking but he was talking about a particular machine like a really weird complicated machine that because uh, you know you talk shop don't you he was talking about this machine that they had um the, these apprentices on and, and they, they didn't have a trainer for them anymore and I said oh I could probably show them that, that how hard could it be and it ended up turning into a contract I actually turned up into a bit of a contract job. So whilst I was running my own business on the days where I was quiet or um, like, a, you know, I wasn't doing anything, I actually started originally just doing it as like live demonstrations in the workplace. And do, and then I, I became an assessor through doing that, just doing these like this live workplace training. Um, and over time, they got me into like the actual college days. So I was doing a couple of like training courses. Originally, as like a, a guest speaker, but then um, I caught the bug for it. Absolutely caught the bug for it. And um, so I, I, I said, yeah, come on, let's do it full time. Let me do it full time. Uh, please let me come here, guys. Even though I had my own business on the side, I, every day there was just, it was an absolute joy. I don't know how many people can say that about a job, but yeah, going to this college was an absolute joy every day. Uh, and so they were like, yeah, well, do you know what? We're, it, this, was, this college was like a specialist design and print college and it's not there anymore, which is a massive shame, but it was a specialist design and print college and they wanted to go, uh, they wanted to embrace technology, wanted to try new things. And I was like, yeah, me too. I want to do it too, guys. Let me, let, me, let me jump in with you. And so they were like, okay, well, this guy, this young whippersnapper can do websites, can't he? This and so they were like, right, well, let's get this guy in to do the tech stuff. And they were starting this remote learning model and they were, you know, this was like, what, 2010, 2011, something like that that so they were just starting this remote model that they wanted to try out so they were kind of dipping the toes in the water and so they were like yeah you give us this tech stuff for us and they were like for me they invested in my, my details quali- teaching qualifications details at the time um, 
And so, yeah, from that, I was like, right, let's do it. And I, I started picking up loads of like contract assessing here and there. So I did quite a lot for this one college and I did for a couple of other colleagues. And most of it was either assessing or like creating basic e-learning materials and, uh, and uh, those sorts of things. It's like a nice blend of the things I like. So there's a bit of kind of web design stuff in there because I was making websites for them to have training platforms on, if that makes sense. Uh, so what we'd usually do, we'd take like the web address and then in front of the web address, we'd put learn.theirwebsite.com and make an e-learning site on their website, which is, you know, that was quite nice. Um, and then it was really weird one day uh, where it kind of like kicked off properly and turned into like, you know, the full-time dream was um, I went into one meeting to talk about what I thought was going to be a teeny tiny contract, like something that was going to be, you know, like an hour a month. Do you know what I mean? It's teeny tiny little contract job for this one company. And um, I was in a funny mood at the time. Uh, I took my Tesco huddle um, because I'd made this, uh, I had this uh, e-learning package I built on it. I'd taken the, I'd chosen the most boring subject I could think of. I think it was paper manufacture at the time. Um, I took this, uh, yeah, but most boring subject ever. I put it on this Tesco huddle, made this interactive PDF with buttons all over it to make, you know, just to show off the super, you know, the e-learning thing that actually you can readily produce super easy on PowerPoint and things like that. Uh, so I made it into a super interactive PDF, went into my huddle. We didn't talk about the contract. We didn't talk about the job. We spent the whole time time messing around with this huddle talking about these weird things that you can make online um it, we didn't talk shop at all and then the end of the day this uh you know this uh, the associate director this company they phoned us up and they were like and they said um i think we've got a full-time role for you would you be interested and i'm like uh tell me more and they were saying that they had this uh they had this you know, they had an IT guy over here and a social media guy over here. And we were talking about the print and design stuff, which was something they had a demand for. And so I think their plan was they had a couple of short courses they needed to deliver that year. So they wanted someone to come in and do that. But they wanted to put this, they called it a digital sector together. They wanted to put a digital sector together and, and kind of merge this this whole group and so I'm like, yeah, let's do it. And so from that, I got to, you know, do a load of training for, yeah, print and design, uh, web design, uh, IT, digital marketing, social media. Uh, and, uh, and it became this full-time like training role. And so I went from kind of messing around doing my odd little bits here and there to working in this one place where we actually did a proper job of it. And, and you know, we, we made this new virtual training stuff. We put on new courses. We did a... Um, yeah, it was my, It just took off, and then uh, say since since doing that, I've just caught the bug. Like I don't want to go back. You know, I've I've uh, like trainings for me you now. Training trainings, you know, particularly the virtual training, the weird technology side of it. That's my life. It's marvelous. I love every second of it. I want to do it forever. Well, I want to do it till I retire. Yeah, <laughs> very good. So that, that's really good because I do want to sort of move on to the course that you develop, and that's the first oh. one uh, that we've put on the site that focuses on teaching the educators themselves. Um, do you want to tell the listeners a bit more about um, what the course is in terms of what it covers and who it's targeted at? Certainly, yeah. So, I mean, in brief, it's all about delivering live online virtual training and creating your own e-learning so or make it so you've heard the term blended learning loads of people bandy around the term blended learning so it's about actually you know exploring blended learning or creating the mythical flipped classroom actually you know doing it in real life so you, you know we all know the training's been shifting for quite a while so like over the last five or six years ago you know, i found my own courses going online and i've been attending more webinars and e doing more e-learning and all that sort of stuff and this year with the pandemic's made it go even more crazy but I found that not everybody feels ready for it. And I know some absolutely amazing tutors in real life, they're amazing, but they're just not comfortable with online delivery. Um, and so I think a lot of teachers, particularly teachers when they're in the full-time teaching role, you know, they've, uh, you know, they spend the time in front of a classroom teaching people, actually doing the job rather than being in front of a computer or in front of a camera. And so they're being forced to change and it's quite a big ask and it looks terrifying. And so, you know, like uh, teachers, tutors, seen sports coaching, stuff like that, they just haven't had the, the opportunity to experiment or learn to use this, you know, education technology or do these different things. Or worse, they've dabbled with it and they've been disappointed in their own resources or disappointed in their own attempts that they've made. And it's like, oh, it's heartbreaking. And particularly, I think, uh, you know, some colleges have an ILT department who are supposed to deal with all this, which I personally believe puts up a bigger barrier because if they think, oh, well, we've got an ILT person for that, they'll do that, then they won't try it themselves. When in reality, um, 
it is a sort of thing that anyone can do. So this course is all, it's for any teacher, any tutor, any coach or anything like that who's just not confident with um, using learning, te- learning, try again, uh, learning technologies or using their new to learning technologies or they just want to take control of the learning technologies, that sort of stuff. And so it's for anybody who's like that, who's you know perhaps a bit shy about it, um, but wants to actually get into it and prove online in the online environment that they're equally as awesome as they are in a live classroom in a live environment so with the course generally we go over all the different learning technologies different training technologies that you can use talk about how to use them Uh, in particular uh, we look at how to use those technologies they're actually freely available and we talk about how to make it as simple and easy and as comfortable as possible so i'm not trying to dumb it down and make it kind of you know like you know try and ruin it or anything like that you know it, it's a hard job any teacher knows it's a tough job you know trying to manage people all these things are fine until you actually get people in the room but it's all about thinking of simple mechanisms simple methods to actually manage um that online classroom uh, to make those online resources make a really nice job that you're happy with um when t- training online okay and as you mentioned um because of the audience it's going to be um teachers largely um that means that they're already generally quite well trained um, on certain aspects of of teaching but you need to obviously try and help them in particular areas can you tell me a bit more about how you decided which bits to focus on and just to make this course as relevant as possible Sure. I mean, this is like, like most of the teachers I know, uh, most of the teachers I work with, they're absolutely fantastic. They're just, yeah, they are amazing. And it's, and it, it, so it's really more about the comfort than I'm not going to teach a trick teacher how to teach. They know how to teach. I couldn't tell them anything about that sort of stuff. They teach better than me most of the time. Um, but with this course, most of it comes from kind of like hard earned experience of making mistakes and trying out weird things and stuff like that. I personally being a, uh, 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 an average to middling teacher uh, maybe um, maybe I'm being humble maybe I'm amazing but maybe I'm actually terrible uh, but I've done quite a lot of you know I, I acknowledge I've quite a lot of cringe worthy lessons um, but I've been really fortunate that I've had a few other people who we've worked with to actually identify what we've done we've watched back some of the training sessions you know like holding in the vomit that's how bad some of them have been <laughs> like uh, we watched back some lessons and we've looked at how to identify the problems and figure out to fix them so for example there's a couple of things that everyone like you know that everyone when they're new to it when we're talking about this they talk about well how about how do you deal with the awkward silence every time you ask a question because it's agony if you're not used to it it's absolute agony but there are ways of dealing with that how do you talk to a room when you've got no feedback you've got no cues and when to go on and it's like you know surely that can't be that can't be right but then when you think about it you know ant and deck on a saturday night they do it all the time they talk to a camera with no feedback you know they uh, i mean it's a tv presenter's job isn't it that's so we're kind of there's a little bit of you know talking about that side of it like if you were going to you know be a tv presenter or something like that um it's things like how do you actually get people working together on something and actually getting them engaged because there's always that suspicion that they might be asleep or turned off or something like that um how to actually bring them into room and get them together get them engaged get them working on something keep them actually active uh, which is actually far more doable than you think it is and the proof of that again is that some people spend eight hours a day in an office actually working that's all we're doing just making a good experience out of that so essentially i wanted to cover everything that a teacher might need to do in real life when it comes to you know using the, the technology so we've broken it down into different sections um so you've got like a for each aspect of or each technological aspect i guess of the online trade and um so you've got we've got a bit about how to you know about planning this lesson into kind of instead of having like you know the the big long right here's how we're going to do this lesson uh, I've, I've broken it down to kind of segments the same way you would um, like a tv variety show so here's a segment and then we move on to this bit and we move on to this bit and how to kind of you know plan it so you can flow between them so you've got a uh, you know so if, if you've got an activity lined up you know how to kind of have the activity ready so you talk about the part you push the button then the activity appears and there's no kind of waiting around for the activity it's just smooth and flows and beautiful and um, we talk about how to feel comfortable on the webcam how to handle actual conversations and stuff like that without interrupting each other or sounding awkward and um, practical ways of collaborating online etc and the idea is so this course got something whatever it is you might need whatever technology webcam presentation screen sharing whatever it is that you might need there's a section on there so it might be a case that some people if they're looking at the course they don't necessarily need everything in the course and that's absolutely fine but there are some bits which 
you know they you know perhaps a lot of people they talk you know they mentioned about struggling on the webcam they're not sure how to kind of present themselves with a webcam or what to do with screen sharing or those sorts of things trying to make life easier for themselves it's got it's broken into sections so the bit you need is there you can click to it you can do the part you need um the whole thing's amazing though to be fair but I've, essentially whatever you're gonna have a problem with there's a section on there about how to deal with that problem easy Excellent. Okay. So I want to move on to sort of peering behind the scenes a little and understand a bit more about what goes on when it comes to creating a course like this. Now, your your style of videos is um, the kind that I would call a talking head format. It's largely you um, talking um, to a camera, like the TV presenter style that you just mentioned shortly ago. Yeah. Um, how did you decide that that was the the right format for you? I mean, did you consider mixing it up for other with other styles? Yeah, well, I, I, yeah, I have to be honest. Like, I, I'm not overly happy with the talking head. Uh, maybe it's the head himself or something like that. Um, but I think originally, the when I say when putting the course together, because there was so much of it, we just I just wanted to get it. I just wanted to get it down on paper to be honest. That's probably the main thing. Um, the kind of the main ethos behind the whole course altogether was the, the most important thing for me was to do it in such a way that any other teacher any other coach could with zero experience in filming or anything like that could also do that's one way of copying out that as well that's one way of saying hey, i've got no experience but i wanted to do it in such a way where there would there'd be minimal video editing there'd be minimal kind of like effort required as proof as proof of concept for anyone else doing the course and there's a, a couple of points in the course where i mentioned about like where i am what i'm doing i think i talk about the equipment and how much like the, the meager equipment i got how much it costs even um so if people want to do it so I to do it with kind of minimal video editing and minimal kind of filming talent i have to be honest i do think uh, over time I'll, I'll, you know we'll we'll upgrade some of those videos with a bit more kind of um you know to swap in a couple more um like you know you cut in a couple more like examples from actual virtual training sessions and stuff like that um but uh, yeah, I think the in terms of the style, I thought it was important to have a face on camera. Most of the e-learning and I do like gen genuinely most of the e-learning and I do in real life um, is all written and read. You know, it's all like they're all less glorified PowerPoints and stuff like that, which I'm not overly happy with. But often that's what a company just needs to, you know, tick a box, get the job done. Um, with this, I thought, you know what, if it's going to be important to somebody, let's treat it like a YouTube channel. Let's have a person behind the camera who's a real person doing what the person watching the course wants to do um, and there is uh, one of the things to talk about is when creating resources it's actually if you've got a difficult concept to explain don't try and explain it in the real life lesson sometimes give yourself permission to record yourself explaining that thing uh, perhaps even you know record yourself in front of the whiteboard or whatever it is you're comfortable using record yourself explaining that thing and do that on the session play that video rather than explain it again the video to give yourself a break so yeah the uh, the talking ad format, I, it's, I, I like it on the grounds that it's good to have a person and it's good to kind of imitate, you know, to model the behavior that you want to other people to do. Um, but I would definitely want to explore more stuff with it. I definitely want to kind of put more stuff in it later on. That might be a job for another day, though. Yeah. OK, that sounds very intriguing. I look forward to seeing what comes out of that. Um, it'd be good, actually, now to just talk a bit more about your workflow. So what I mean by that is you go through the process of creating these videos the course itself um what are the steps you you normally take so i'd imagine there's a planning stage um you then go about actually recording the, the content itself uh, and there's presumably some time you need to edit it um can you tell us a bit more about that process and how long each sure. of those stages tend to take yeah, well, I've actually robbed some of my ideas from them because I teach a lot, you know, the main thing I teach them in is digital marketing. So I actually robbed a, a load of ideas from digital marketing uh, with this one. Uh, so I'm quite happy to answer this question. So uh, one of the things, uh, one of the digital marketing kind of courses or ideas I teach, or if we're, particularly with like kind of private courses, if you've got a, a sales director who's got a whole load of work that they need to be doing, they're working full time, just like a teacher, they've got a full time worth of job to do in the day and then they get home, they've got marketing to do at night. They haven't got the time for kind of just you know doing odd bits here and there and messing around and stuff like that so um i've kind of taken it from this point of view of going right well what's again what's a full-time person going to do um and so yeah in digital marketing when you've got like someone with all that responsibility but they need to create marketing content for the week um 
essentially, I've just used my own advice here and I started this whole thing. I treated the whole exercise as a series of listicle style blogs. Um, so there's a, a lovely theory that uh, I refer to in a different course called the content vortex, the idea of take something massive and then break it down into loads of miniature segments that you could then later on publish as, con as content later on as well. So maybe have like a, in this case, a, a, a full on course, which then you could break down into miniature videos that was made to be broken down that, you know, those miniature videos could be broken down to shorter articles into individual Facebook posts into quotes or that sort of stuff. So, um, with, yeah, with, with this course, I treated it like a, 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 a listicle style blog. So, um, I don't know if everyone else kind of if anyone else kind of goes this way as well, but I find it a very you know it's a very kind of cathartic way of getting all your ideas down in one place, and it's a big idea the virtual training thing, getting it all down in one place. So I started with some titles, um, I literally started with like what are the important things I want to talk about, big titles, so broad ideas, big titles, and then for each title, so what like um, like quite early on, uh, one of the things I was going to talk about was screen sharing. I had this uh, experience of doing this virtual training. Uh, session with a gentleman who worked in an industry that had security issues is the safest way of putting it and he was sharing his screen and you're thinking mate there is data on the screen that I sh you should not be sharing this is bad and it was kind of like it was just like one thing i noticed that day and so whilst i was writing this thing out it's like right we've got this section on screen sharing we're gonna have some do's and don'ts of screen sharing how to make it easy how to set it up how to do all this different stuff and i literally wrote down headings I start with headings, then after looking over these kind of main heading sections, different ideas I wanted to talk about, sometimes um, the idea would kind of yield more results. And I'd look at that major heading and think, well, actually, there's a couple of things to talk about here. And there's some experience I remember from this thing going wrong over there. And so, yeah, started with the titles, then we had some headings, and then we had some subheadings. And then for a long time, I literally left it at that. Um, in fact, I remember, you know, talking to yourself about this sort of thing and it was like, yeah, well, I've got the idea and I've got these things written down and they're all, and uh, I'm talking up in my head as if I've got these things written down. I've literally got headings written down. Um, but then um, after that, where I have got five minutes here or there, 10 minutes here and there, I can actually focus on this small heading and actually write a script. So with, because I ramble a lot, because uh, I talk a whole lot, I find that I need a script to if i'm going to record something i generally write a script not quite word for word but often you know close enough and actually found myself writing out 90 percent of this course as a script um that uh I, even, I could have worked for it i could have rattled it out from the top of my head i could have genuinely done that but i knew it would have taken four hours it had taken forever it'd have been like a really long boring kind of course so for me i found that that's starting uh starting with the headings and then rambling through in my own mind i could then write out a more efficient version of the script and one of the other things because i wanted to one of the, another thing um, just from when i was wanted to film the course one of the things i wanted to do it's a really sort of weird small thing for me i wanted to make eye contact on the actual recording i wanted the the film to be me looking into the camera not me constantly looking down looking away looking at my, my whiteboard or looking at my notes or anything like that i wanted to make eye contact and so um a one of my you know like friends or, or someone i met on linkedin they recommended this teleprompter app so i made this script and i could stick it on the teleprompter app and that read it and so um yeah so for me very much i started with a script which was headings and then i filled in with the actual details i wanted to talk about um, like over time some of it was still just bullet points and stuff like that and as I was writing the scripts I could kind of clearly identify right what needs to be done on PowerPoint what needs to be on screen share what needs to be done um, I got the one little minor section uh, where what needed to be done with children jumping on the bed behind the camera do you know what I mean like that sort of thing and I could kind of piece all the segments together after that it was just a case of once I had all I'd, I'd literally film that segment I'd film that one section that subheading and then um, I, I, you know, I spent a, a set up a room in my kitchen, uh, like a space in my kitchen, which I decorated all nicely and got a nice light on. And that was it. I'll, I'll show you how to do that in the course. And, uh, and I filmed a load of sections afterwards. I could then make a, I made some mini kind of videos in PowerPoint to, as like, you know, section headers. And I just stitched them together using a, a cheap and nasty video editor that you can download for free. Um, and uh, yeah, you could I put the full set, pull, yeah try that again Charles uh, put the full lesson together uh, as segments and just stitch the segments together in a video editing so um, the script was really you know 80% of the job was just writing it out in a way that I was happy with when it came to recording when you're recording short segments it's really easy to just get it right first time um, so it's kind of 
thinking what are all the ways I can make this easy for myself short segments script it out use a teleprompter app um, have you know make the you know set up the room so that it's comfortable so that it's you know you feel safe you feel you know you're in a you're in a happy place uh, and then after that you know the parts where I need to go on zoom and record it with somebody else in the room you know I could see clearly from the script what I needed to do and it, it, it's almost like the script wrote my to-do list for me uh, and it's quite easy to manage Excellent. That's actually really clear and actually touches on some of the things I wanted to understand. So you mentioned the script um, and then use of a teleprompter app to make that visible while you were recording. Uh, and actually the, the really good thing that I got to learn there was actually that it did succeed in reducing the number of takes that you needed to record oh, yeah. uh, the content. Um, so then the last stage is obviously the editing part. Um, in terms of how much time that took compared to the recording or, or the scripting, what would you say the balance was roughly? Well, that's it. The, it was weird. So some of the, there's one, one of the actual videos I did was this really complicated thing messing around on PowerPoint. And I thought at the start I'd make like a, a bit of a depressing film about uh, death by PowerPoint. And um and when I looked at the time I spent on it, that long one, which had the, the video, if I look at the actual, my video editor, it's got all these little sections in it. And it looks really complicated. And actually I did that in about, it, I think the video is quite long, but I did the whole thing actually editing it in about an hour. And, um, which is quite impressive. I've tried, I've, I've worked out it's pretty, whatever, however many minutes it takes to do something times 10 to uh, film it. So if you've got like a two minute video, you know, you're looking at a 20 minute edit minimum. Um, some of them, I found most of it was just dealing with my own mistakes. So I think with uh, one of the videos, I thought I could do the whole thing in one take and I made a couple of mistakes. So I had to keep going back and editing out and tidying up. But in terms of time wise, when I actually sat down to do it, once I had a bit of motivation, you could actually do it really quickly. So I think I probably spent, um, I spent longer watching the videos back afterwards to feel comfortable with it uh, than I did actually you know stitching the main bit together so I'd say if we had have like a rough edit of a video that you could just run with you could just work with um, I'd probably spent uh, you know for every uh, if it was if, if a video was like three minutes long I'd probably spend an hour on it if that makes sense uh, maybe two hours on it I didn't actually spend a whole load of time just because the takes were short most of the video editing was cutting out the pause at the beginning cutting out the pause at the end job done um, like the video editor that I use. So, I mean, I don't want to advertise them or anything like that, but there's one called Ice Cream Video Editor. It allows you to make five minutes of video for free. Um, the license isn't expensive if you want to do like a bit longer, but it's really easy. It's just a case of choose the easiest technology you can. That one, you drag in the, the video that you want to use. If you want to transition between one video to another one, um, it, you can set it to, you know, blend or something like that. Um, and then you, you just literally you, you just put the bits together and once you're happy with it at the end you can preview it you can trim it you can do whatever you want to it if you wanted to go into more detail but yeah you put all the bits together click the export button and then it you know then it uh yeah it, it renders itself into a proper video it, it's probably hard to say accurately because each one spent a, a different time on it but i mean what if we think of a you know got a couple of 10 minute videos in there couple, quite a few which are probably less than 10 minutes um i probably only spent maybe an hour to two hours on each one um, and then after that, it was just a case of watching them back afterwards. It doesn't seem like a lot. If you think it, it, see, or it might seem like a lot because you spend two or three minutes just watching the video before you found the bit that you want to kind of trim away. Um, but that's it. It's not actually a hard job. I, I found I was doing some of it whilst watching TV in the evening. Okay, very good. Um, we, we obviously have an element of, um, you know, peering behind the scenes here and in particular, this is quite interesting because your course is about online learning and creating digital content. And we're asking you to explain how you developed a course about digital content. Um, so it's really good to um, go through that and understand it. Um, I'm sure it's going to be very useful and I'm sure people have enjoyed um, hearing your enthusiasm for creating material like this. So thank you very much, Charles. I really appreciated you joining us today. Ah, oh, thank you very much, man. It's been uh, it's been emotional. It's been great. Thank you very much. Thank you. This was an episode with lots of useful insight, not only from a career journey perspective, but also how Charles employs the techniques from his marketing experience to publicise his course. This added a lot of colour to the journey of online educators 
beyond the content creation side of things. I hope you find it useful. If you are interested in uploading materials to Educator, please send an email to info at educator.com. You will also find information about getting started on Educator in the guidance part of the website. Don't forget that you can find links to courses in the show notes and the social media posts that accompany the release of this episode. If you've got this far, thank you very much for listening. Please do like and share the podcast. Thank you.